Matthew 9, 20 to 21. A woman who had been bleeding for 12 years came up behind Jesus and barely touched his clothes. She had said to herself, If I can just touch his clothes, I will get wet. The Jesus touch. Ano nga ba ang kahulugan na tayo makaramdam ng paghipo, pag-aalaga, pag-aruga ng Panginoong Yesus? We thank you, Father, for your touch through Jesus. And now we ask you to touch our hearts, our minds, our intellect, that we may understand more deeply the meaning of the Jesus touch. The meaning that you have touched us through Jesus when you sent him to our world. Father, we ask you to speak to us, correct us, encourage us, heal us. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray with thanksgiving. The Jesus touch, wonderful, powerful, extraordinary. Mark 1, 4. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Itong panahon ni John the Baptizer was the turning point of God's dealing with people. From the old dispensation of the laws comes a new period, a new time of love and grace. And in the middle of that transition, in the middle of those two periods, was the baptism of John. He preached a baptism of repentance, not sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins. So dun pa lang, alam na alam natin, may malaking, malaking magbabago. Dahil libong taon na ang itinuturo ng religion, ng Jewish religion, ng temple was sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Offerings for the forgiveness of sins. Here comes John, baptizing with water, not requiring sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins. At sabi niya, I'm making straight the path of the Lord. Inihahanda ko ang mundo para sa ministry ni Jesus. At sa ministry ito, ginagawa sa mga wilderness, sa tabi ng ilog, sa labas ng templo, sa bagong panahon ng pakikipagniig ng Diyos sa tao. Outside of the temple, outside of the traditional requirements of the temple, using very new symbolisms. The symbolism of repentance. Metaphor in baptism. Mark 1, 5-7 The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to Him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by Him in the Jordan River. So because there was repentance, there had to be a one-time, big-time dealing with sin. So sin was confessed, and sin was symbolically washed away in the water of baptism. So baptism was preparatory, but it was not the real big thing. It was preparation. Verse 7, and this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So may dalawang kambyo from sacrifices in the temple officiated by priests, kumambyo sa baptism of repentance. And then sabi ni John, this is not yet it. Pagkatapos nito, darating ang tunay sang dakilang tunay na hindi ako karapat dapat na magtanggal ng tali ng kanyang sandalyas. Nagbabautismo ako ng tubig lamang. Pero siya babautismo ang kayo ng banal na espiritu. So, another cambio. So, by then, malayong malayo na yung economy of God from the economy of the temple, from the economy of animal sacrifices, from the economy of priests standing between people and God. There will no longer be any distance. People will have direct access to God. That when Jesus died, the curtain on the temple was torn from top to bottom, opening the area of the Holy of Holies na dati high priest lang ang pwedeng pumasok. Malaking pagbabago. Ang dulot ng pagdating ni Jesus, o 
dapat naging dulot ng pagdating ni Jesus, na paglipas ng panahon, pinatahimik muli, ginapusan, minaliit ng mga darating na maraming mga religious movements and religious teachings, na parang ibinalik lang nila uli dati yung temple, ibinalik lang uli dati mga laws na parang hindi nangyari si Jesus. But, going back to Jesus, John opens a new age, the age of the Spirit. From the age of the stone temple, now it is the age of the heart of flesh, no longer the heart of stone. The age of forgiveness and love, no longer the age of judging, the age of condemning people and hatred among believers in the name of God. It was the age of the good news to counter the age of the bad news that God is angry, people are going to hell, people are going to be punished. The good news is God forgives, God cleanses, and God loves through Jesus. So in this age of no more sacrifices, in fact, it is the age of the end of the law. Sobrang kakaiba, sobrang revolutionary. Hindi pwedeng dumating si Jesus sa buhay ng Israel na hindi magigimbal, maliliggalig, mahahalo ang balas at tinalupan kasi pinalitan niya ang very foundation of spirituality and the very foundation of the relationship between God and man. And He paid the price for the payment of all the sins of all people so that all people could now be declared clean, sinless, acceptable, holy to God. Not because of people's accomplishment, but because of the accomplishment of Jesus. Kahit sa buhay ng mga tao ngayon, hindi pwede masabing dumating si Jesus, pumasok sa ating puso, tapos walang nangyaring mga pagbabago. Ang pagdating ni Jesus is always new. New wine, a new wine skin, a new dispensation, a new law, a new command, a new heaven, a new earth, new everything. Hindi pwedeng ituloy lang yung luma at paghasaluin yung luma at bago. John 1.17 is clear. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. This is almost as if very clearly sinasabing tapos na si Moses, si Jesus naman. Tapos na yung paraan ng pakikipag ng mga tao through the law at ngayon it is now through Jesus, through the cross, through the love of Jesus made clear by sacrifice for people. It's a clear shift, a very clear change. Luke 16, 16 to 17, the law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached. Ang pagtuturo daw ng mga batas at mga katuroan ng mga propetang nauna ay hanggang kay John lang. Closed book na yon. May bagong binuksan, the good news of the kingdom of God preached through the blood of Jesus. The same verse in contemporary English version, Until the time of John the Baptist, people had to obey the law of Moses and the book of the prophets. So it says until, it means after John the Baptist, that no longer is. Na ang itutuloy na lamang ng mga katuruan ni Moses, ng mga law, ng mga prophets before John, were all those that now agree and still agree with the teachings of Jesus. At yung mga katuruan ng una, na hindi na sangayon sa maibiging paraan ni Jesus, hindi na sangayon sa kanyang mapagpalayang paraan, hindi na sangayon sa kanyang mapagtanggap na paraan, yan ay hindi na iiral. Kaya sinabi, until the time of John the Baptist, people had to obey the law of Moses and the book of the prophets. Ang nakakalungkot lang, after Jesus, in the past 2,000 years of Christian church history, parang nag-backslide uli ang church to Moses. Nag-backslide uli ang church to the prophets, to the points and areas and teachings that Jesus already replaced with His one command, His command to love. Kaya yung mga ipinagpipilitan pa rin ngayon na malaking kasalanan na magtrabaho during the Sabbath, bumalik lang sila kay Moses samantalang dineclare na ni Jesus that He is the Lord of the Sabbath. At para patunayan niya, siya ay gumawa ng maraming mga hiwala sa araw mismo ng Sabbath. At sinabi niya, Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. 
use the Sabbath for your benefit. But if it's disadvantageous to you to observe it, then don't. It is made for you. You were not made for it. Pero hanggang ngayon, malaking issue pa rin sa iba ang Sabbath. Diniklare na ni Jesus that all foods are clean, spiritually speaking. Pero ngayon, marami po ulit nag-i-insist, you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that. At syempre, i-quote nila si Moses, the Old Testament, the law. Parang hindi nangyari si Jesus. At hanggang ngayon, marami pa rin gustong bumato ng mga may kasalanan, mangusig, magparusa, magpuera, parang hindi nangyari si Jesus na heto na nga yung babaeng na huli sa pangangalo niya. Sabi ng batas ni Moses, batuhin hanggang mamatay, pero hindi ipinabato. Tapos ngayon, batuhan uli. The church had backslidden to the law and the prophets. And sadly, to the teachings in the law and the prophets that are now contradictory to the love of God revealed in Jesus. And the Christian church is so confused. Kaya may araw na mabait, may araw na hindi. May araw na pinapairal yung mga harsh teachings of the law. May aral naman na nangingibabaw yung pag-ibig ni Jesus. Pero nakakalito. At pagka nakakaroon ng pilian, madalas sa pipili to go back to the law. So the law was until John. But the Jesus-like elements of the law and the prophets continue. Not because they were what they were, but because they conform with Jesusness. In the new age of the Lord, the new period, the new era of Jesus, lahat ng teaching na sangayon naman sa Kanya, edi tuloy, pero dapat malinaw sa mga makahesus, mga nananalit kay Jesus na mayroong mga patakaran, may mga pamamaraan at pag-iisip na hindi na bagay. In the age of grace, in the age of love through Jesus. Mark 1, 14-15 After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Nakita niya yung kambyo. From the Old Testament of the law, ikinambyo ni John to baptism of repentance. At nung si John ay napugutan ng ulo, si Jesus na ngayon ang nag-iisang nagsasalita. Dahil si John ay natahimik na at sumakabilang buhay. Ito na ngayon ang sinasabi ni Jesus. The kingdom has come. Repent and believe it. Hindi na believe to prepare for it. Sabi na ni Jesus, believe it. Ano ang good news? Na hindi na effective ang mga malulupit na mga parusa sa iyo ng law of Moses. Ang iiral na sa buhay mo ay ang pagpapatawad ng Diyos pag ikay nanalig kay Jesus. Ang iiral na sa iyo ay ang grace, kindness, acceptance of God. That is the good news. As opposed to the bad news that you're always stoned, you are always wounded, you're always judged according to the old style, the old dispensation. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, yan na. Eto na, ako na ang nagtuturo, wala na si John, naihanda na kayo ni John, receive the real thing, the good news. And the good news is God loves you, God cares for you, God cleanses you through Jesus, God accepts you no matter what, and this should be now the trend among people the believers of Jesus. And for a while, it was so. Until, when the original hearers and followers of the Lord, ay sumakabilang buhay na, nagsimula na namang sumingit at manaig ang mga makalo, mga Moses. Kaya pinagtatalo-talo na noon pa lang at makikita to sa Book of Acts kung ang mga mana ng palataya ba na Gentile ay kailangan pang masircumcise according to the Jewish law. Pinapairal na naman nila yung pagiging Jewish. Samantalang sinabi na na circumcision of the heart ang important, not circumcision of the foreskin. Sinabi na na anybody, Jew or Gentile, man or woman, young or old, rich or poor, free or slave, they're all equal before the Lord and are acceptable. Now they are setting up conditions that will make believers in Jesus Jewish first before they get accepted into the church. A big backslide was happening. And it's happening until now that in the last 2,000 years of Christian history, there is very little of Jesus in everything. There was a lot of the law, a lot of hatred, a lot of anger, a lot of rejection, a lot of stoning one another. That's why Jesus must be brought back to his church. 
put Jesus back into his church. So the end of John's ministry catapulted Jesus into a full-time public ministry. And Jesus did not really do a public ministry until after John died. The end of the transition period from the law and the prophets to Jesus had now happened. Mark 1, 21-22 When the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to preach. The synagogue was the little version of the temple. Kumbaga sa mga bayan-bayan may malalaking simbahan, sa mga barrio may mga maliliit na bisita, yun yung synagogue. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. So you see, pansin na pansin na iba ang content ng message niya. Hindi tulad ng mga nauna. Ibang-iba ang thrust, ibang-iba ang paraan, ibang-iba ang theology. Theology na kakapagpalaya, imbis na kakapagtali. Nakakapagpabait, imbis na kakapagpasungit. Theology na nagpapaluwag ng dibdib, imbis nagpapabigat. Nagtatanggal ng guilt, imbis naglalagay at nagdadagdag pa. Sabi nila, ibang-iba naman itong Jesus na to At with matching miracles pa ang pagduturo niya. Kaya hindi mo pagdududahan na siya'y tunay na sugo ng Ama sa Langit. So nasa sinagog siya at may nangyari. Mark 1, 23-24 Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Take note, yung possessed, hindi nasa kalye, hindi nasa mga places of sin, nasa sinagog. Believer, member. So sa tinagal-tagal ng kada dasal niya, ka-attend doon, hindi natanggal yung evil spirit sa kanya. Walang naging ganong talab yung kanyang relihiyon sa kanya. At tumakita si Jesus, sabi niya, anong gusto mong gawin sa amin? Dumating ka ba para puksain na kami? Kilala ka namin. Ikaw ang tunay na banal na subo ng Diyos. And this evil spirit in the man can be read also as a metaphor aside from reading it literally. And metaphorically, symbolically, the many layers of meaning, the Sabbath and the synagogue could represent the old order. Yung sinasabing order na natapos na, yung hanggang kay John lamang, and the impure spirit is in that synagogue. The impure spirit of religion, that which oppresses, that which makes your life hard, that which gives you a lot of inner demons, guilt, self-rejection, and rejection of others. At sabi ng Spirit kay Jesus, dahil new age na ngayon, age of love, age of goodness, age of kindness of the Father, have you come to destroy us? Or read it symbolically, have you come to destroy the Sabbath and the synagogue? Sabbath ngayon, may gagawin ka. Eh di madedestroy yung Sabbath. Sa synagogue mo pag ginawa, are you really replacing all of these teachings with a new one? Is this age really going to a close? Is this chapter in our religiosity going to end? Have you come to destroy this system and replace it with a new one? And you can because we know you. You are the Holy One of God, not us. Ang lalim nung naganap na maikling sentences na yun. Alam nung evil spirit ko nung ibig niya sabihin. At alam din ni Jesus ang hindi lang natin alam kung naintindihan ang buo ng mga ibang nanonood at nakikinig doon. At bago pa ko ano-ano sabihin ng Espiritong ito, Mark 1, 25-26, Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. Saan niya manahimik ka? Lumabas ka sa kanya. At meron pang palabas itong spirito na to bago siya umalis. Nagkapilipilipit, nagkangiwi-ngiwi, nagkauga-uga yung tao. Tsaka palang umalis yung spirito. The evil spirit came out of the man. And if the man, read symbolically, meant the old order, the system that never really drove off evil spirits anyway, a religiosity that added a lot of inner demons to people, 
the evil spirit came out of the Sabbath of the law in the synagogue of the temple the evil spirit came out of the religious system that was only oppressing the people not really helping them masarap basahin ang Bible una ba basahin mo literally ano yun pag sabing I am the door o basahin mo literally kung gusto mo pinto talaga pero lalalim pag binasa mo pinto as metaphor entry point not into a place but into another consciousness into another level of understanding into another level of emotion door maraming ibig sabihin kaya itong mana ito possessed by an evil spirit and the synagogue could mean many things huwag nating lilimitahan ang pagbasa because the Bible is literature kaya mahalaga na may literary skills ka rin para hukay-hukayin mo yung mga iba pang kahulugan ng pinagbababasa and that is a very very sound reading because it's very consistent with the general trajectory of the ministry of Jesus to set people free from the old system to set people free from the system that was not kind to them that was in fact very destructive to them Mark 1, 27-28 The people were all so amazed that they asked each other What is this? A new teaching and with authority He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey Him News about Him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee Alam na mga tao na yung mga dati na nilang naririnig yung uupo sila doon, makikinig sila sa mga sermon, yun at yun, yun at yun, yun at yun. Pero nung dumating si Jesus, niya, baka kayo ba ito ha? At hindi mo pwedeng tanggihan. Kasi authoritative. Pati evil spirit, nakikinig. Takot na takot tayo pag may poses. Baka tayo sakalin, baka tayo saktan. Siya ay natusan niya, sumunod. Iba to, ibang panahon na ang nagsimula. And that was the ministry that was begun by Jesus to set people free from their inner demons. Ano yung mga inner demons ng mga tao? Eh di walang katapasang fear, walang katapasang guilt, walang katapasang self-rejection and rejection of others. Hatred, anger. Yan ang mga inner demons na nakatira sa mga tao na kahit anong relihiyon ang gawin, ang daming attendance, ando pa rin. Liban, makinig sa tinig ni Jesus at paalisin ang mga ito sa ating buhay with the light of Jesus. So the people immediately sensed and knew that the newness of the idea would lead to spiritual healing because the man got spiritually healed. Kumisan gusto-gusto natin yung physical healing kasi immediate yung result, kitang-kita, tumatalab, pero ang kailangan nating lahat is spiritual healing. Mga sukat ng ating damdamin, mga pusong hindi makapagpatawad ng napakatagal ng mga offenses at pains na tatanggap. Mga puso nating sobra nang nadalang maging mabuti, nagpapanggat at tuloy tayong masama just to protect ourselves. Napakarami natin mga takot tungkol sa ating imperfection, sa ating mga secrets done in darkness. Sa matalang wala namang darkness sa Diyos, kita niya lahat, so huwag ka na magtago. Come out in the light, bring it to the Lord for healing and for acceptance and for restoration because He is the light. Napakahalaga na lumabas doon sa maliit na sinagob na yon kung saan napakarami mga pagdurusang nangyayari sa damdamin ng tao. At yun ang gustong gawin ni Jesus to lead His flock out into the pasture, into the open field where they can enjoy sitting in green grass and drinking by still waters. Tahimik dapat ang buhay hindi laging galit. Hindi laging galit sa sarili. Hindi laging natatakot ng parusa, kundi nananalig sa kapayapaang ibinibigay ng Diyos through forgiveness in Jesus Christ. This is the central message of Jesus. Spiritual rest. Dapat rested ang isang taong nasa Panginoon. Mark 1, 29-31 As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law, Simon by the way is also called Peter, was in bed with a fever. So may biyanan siya, therefore may asawa. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, take note that Jesus touched, and helped her up. 
the fever left her and she began to wait on them. May sakit ang matandang to. Ilang araw nang nakaratay, hinawa ka ni Jesus sa kanyang kamay at ibinangon, umalis ang lagnat. Ano nyo man, lagnat, cause sa infection, cause ang ano-ano pa. At pagbango na pagbango niya, nagtrabaho, pinaglingkuran niya yung mga nagpagaling sa kanya. So there was physical healing and this healing was into service, into work, into belongingness. Because when you're part of the work, you're part of the family. Kaya mahalaga yung may work ka, may work ka sa ministry, lalo mong nalalamang part ka of it. Hindi ka lang bisita. Mark 1, 32 to 34. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and the demon-possessed. Nabalitaan nila. Kawawa yung mga tao. Di mo ang beses nagdara sa laraw-araw. Lahat ng pera nila napunta sa uh, aabuloy sa templo. They were ruled over by so many religious laws. Tapos, hindi pa rin sila gumagaling. Walang naiiba sa buhay nila, lumalala pa lang. So nung nabalitaan nila ang ginagawa ni Jesus, nagkagulo sila. People want healing. People want comfort. People want forgiveness. People want acceptance. But this they never got from religion. They never got from the temple. The temple just did nothing but to st throw stones at them and get their money and receive their offerings and still continue to condemn them and to give them more and more and more regulations that made their life hard. Kaya naawa ang ama sa mga tao isinugo si Jesus para ituwid ang mga kabaluktutan na ito. Verse 33, The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But He would not let the demons speak because they knew who He was. Mga kapatid, yung mga demons na yan, literally, may mga demons talaga, totoong demons, pero pwede ring basahin ang ilan sa mga ito na metaphor. Inner demons, conflicted personalities, conflicted value system, mga kalituhan, mga takot, mga hirap ng loob, they are also called demons. Na nawawala, pag natanggap mo ang pagpapatawad ng Diyos through Jesus, eh di nawawala na yung guilt mo. Na kung ikaw isolated dahil itinatapong ka ng religion, ayaw kang pansinin, branded ka, pero tinatanggap ka ni Jesus and you're a member of the Jesus family and you go with them and live with them and eat with them, nawawala yung isolation. Nawawala yung sense of rejection. Gano'n tayo sa karami ang may demons of rejection in our hearts. Na bata pa lang tayo, nireject na tayo ng nanay natin, nireject tayo ng tatay, nireject tayo ng lola, nireject tayo ng kung sino-sino, ng mga kapitbahay. Tapos dala-dala mo sa puso mo yung rejection. And here comes Jesus embracing you, accepting you, loving you for who you are, and restoring you, and filling all the gaps within you so that you can become whole. Aalis ang demonyong yan na nakatira sa'yo. At ano mga symbol na nandyan pala, mga pahimakas na nandyan yung mga demonyong yan, yung lagi kang naguguluhan, lagi kang natatakot. Tapos kung saan-saan ka humahanap ng ginhawa, kung kani-kanino ka nalang sumasama para ka nalang magkaroon ng papa, kung kani-kanino ka nalang na makikisama ka para ka nalang magkaroon ng mga kabarkada, kahit napapasama ka na, magkaroon lang nang a-accept sa'yo. But in Jesus and in the Jesus community, you're accepted and loved without condition, siguradong tatansik yung mga demons na yan. At ang magiging kapalit, katahimikan, kapayapaan, pahinga na ang effect ngayon dahil pahinga ka nagiging mas mabait ka at nabibigyan mo rin ang kapwa mo ng pahinga napakarami mga religious families silang unang-unang nagre-reject sa kanilang mga anak pag hindi in conformity with the requirements of the law and Moses and the church and kung sino-sino pa yung bata ang unang-unang namumulat sa kanya na damdamin is rejected siya Gano katagal pag hilumin ang sugat na ganyan? Gano katagal paalisin ang mga impaktong nakatira sa mga puso ng taong walang natanggap kundi rejection, kundi pintas, kundi paggalit ang daming biktima? At lahat yan pinagaling ni Jesus. Noon hanggang ngayon, yan pa rin ang ministry ni Jesus na dapat ministry ng church. Magpagaling, pagmahal, tumanggap, nang walang patakaran 
ipasa Diyos ang lahat ng issues na hindi malinaw sa atin, but never sit as judges of other people. The people understood the work of Jesus. It was spiritual and physical healing. But spiritual first. Kasi napakalaking porsyento ng mga sakit galing sa isip. Galing sa tortured emotion affecting the body. So they went to him, not to the temple, because the temple was a dismal failure. The synagogue was a failure. Nandun na nga yung tao, tapos possessed pa siya. Mark 1, 39 to 42. So Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues, and driving out demons. Ayan na naman, napakarami mga possessed sa loob nung synagogue. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Alam niyo ba, magkano ka ng leprosy? Nung araw, lahat ng sakit na parang hindi nagagaling, yung mga sakit sa balat may ganito mga simptom, tinawag nila lahat leprosy. Kasi wala naman silang clinical, medical, modern standards to identify the different kinds of skin diseases. Pagka ikaw ay naituring na may leprosy, Branded ka na. You are called unclean. You are presented to the priest, and the priest examines you, and when the priest says, leprosy yan, unclean, you are kicked out of the community. Mawawalay ka sa asawa mo kung may asawa ka, sa anak mo kung may anak ka, sa magulang mo, mawawalay ka sa mga kaibigan, kasi lahat ng leper, itinatapon sa labas ng bayan, nagtitira sila sa mga gilid-gilid ng bundok, mga kweba-kweba. At pag kami lalapit sa kanila, dapat isigaw nila, according to the law, unclean, unclean, huwag kayong lalapit sa amin. At pag sila ay pumunta sa mga bayan-bayan, kung ano man ang dahilan, siguro sobrang lungkot, namimiss sila mga mahal sa buhay, nakita sila ng mga tao, babatuhin sila. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng may leprosy. At itong tao, sabi niya kay Jesus, kung gusto mo lang, pwede mo akong linisin. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. He was not angry at the man. He was angry at the system that made a terrible sickness still a more terrible brand na doble-doble ang pagdurusa ng mga tao. May sakit na nga sila dapat alagaan, itinatakwil pa. Considered na nga sila na hindi tulad ng ibang normal, itatakwil pa, papahirapan pa lalo. Sobrang malupit ang mga tao. Ang lupit ng loo. Jesus said to end it all. So he touched the man. It was against the law to touch a leper. But remember, Jesus was not a lawbreaker because the law was only until John. After John, it was already Jesusness at work. But many people still did not know that. Like up to now, many people still know, don't know that. Instead of applying the principles of Jesus, they'll apply the law and be cruel in the process. So sabi niya, I am willing. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Can you imagine what weight was lifted from the shoulders of this human being and from the shoulders of everyone else who cared for him? And Jesus said, be clean. And the cleaning was not only physical, now, there was no longer the brand. So he can, he can attend weddings again, funerals, family events. This is the issue of Jesus, to integrate people into the community, not to exclude them. Because we were created by God to interact with other humans. So divisiveness, shunning people out, expelling them, is un-Jesus. Jesus would like people to belong Especially to a family. Pero kung family pa mismo ang magtatakwil dahil sa kanilang mga religious baggage sa utak nila, dahil sa law at kung ano-ano pa, that is un-Jesus. Kaya ipinakita na yan ni Jesus sa kanyang kwento ng prodigal son. Hiningi ang mana niya sa ama, naglostay, at nung naubos, papasok na lang siyang katulong sa bahay ng ama niya, pakakain malang ng libre, at malayo pa siya, tumakbo pa yung ama pa halapit sa kanya nung uuwi na siya. Sinalubong siya, binihisan, binigyan ng sing-sing, nilagyan ng robe, at ipinag-party. Yun ang gustong ipakilala ni Jesus tungkol sa ating Ama. 
Nagkamali ka, mali-mali ka na, ang dumi-dumi mo, ang baho-baho mo, naglustay-lustay ka, pero yayakapin ka pa rin. Kailan natin maintindihan yun? At kailan natin ma-apply yun sa ating pakikitungo sa kapwa? The Jesus love. Hindi nagre-reject, hindi nagtatapon, hindi naglalayo. Kahit patotoong nagkamali, kahit patotoong may kasalanan, eh paano pa kung hindi naman pala kasalanan yung iniisip natin kasalanan dahil religious policy lang pala, hindi naman talaga galing talaga sa Diyos. Mga policy lamang na pang reliyon, pang lupa, hindi pang eternal values of God. Tapos, pinaparusahan mo yung tao dahil doon, di doble-doble ang hirap na dinaranas. Kaya mga tao, yung iba, pag nagiging religyoso, lalong nagiging malupit, lalong nagiging maselan, laging lumalayo sa kapwa, nagpupwera ng mga tao, but Jesus heals leprosy. That is the physical level, but in the spiritual level, Jesus heals labeling. The labeling, unclean. Ayaw niya may tinatawag na unclean. And on the basis of that label, na unclean, entitled ka ng batuhin siya, itakwil siya, maging malupit sa kanya at hindi maging mabuti, Jesus doesn't want those kind of labeling. Jesus heals exclusion. Yan ang mga parusa ng leprosy. Hindi lang yung may physically nararamdaman ka sa katawan mong masakit, kundi mas masakit yung itinatakwil ka ng kapwa at mas masakit yung ipinupwera ka sa matalang tao ka at gusto mo na nakikisalamuha, nakikipagmabutihan, nakikisangkot sa buhay ng mga taong mahalaga sa iyo. This is the heart of the Jesus ministry. To heal leprosy, to heal labeling, to heal exclusion. Mark 1, 43-45 Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell people, you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Priest ang nagsabing unclean ka. So magpakita ka doon para sabihin niyang yes, clean ka na. And technically speaking, legally speaking, socially speaking, ma-integrate ka ulit sa community. But more than that, ipakita mo sa kanila ang ginawa ko sa iyo na hindi nila kahit kailan nagawa. Napagalingin ka. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely. Hindi ko alam kung matutuwa ako magagalit sa taong ito. Hindi niya makaya sa dibdib niya, sa rilinin ang kabutihan ni Jesus. Sabi ni Jesus, huwag kang magbalibalita dyan, manahimik ka, lalo naman nagbalita. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. Hindi na ngayon makapasok sa Jesus mga bayan-bayan dahil dinudumog na lang siya. Selfiehan ng selfiehan na lang ang mga tao. No? Nadidistract siya sa kanyang mas malalalim na mga spiritual activities kasi inuusyoso na siya. Kung ano-ano na, hindi naman lahat ang nandun. Merong mga deep faith. Meron namang nandun para lang siya pabulaanan, para hanapan siya ng mali. So ngayon tuloy, ang naging bunga, hindi na siya ganun ka-free pumasok sa mga bayan-bayan. People need the touch of Jesus. People need freedom from their inner demons that cause much more outward sicknesses from the guilt and the fear. People need that Jesus touch, the healing of the body, the soul, and the spirit. Gano karami, sinasadya man natin ng hindi, ang nasusugata natin ang damdamin dahil sa ating mga kabanalan o pagbabanal-banalan. Anong uri ng kabanalan mayroon ka kung sa pag practice nito sa pagtuturo nito ay mananakit ka ng damdamin. Anong uri ng kabanalan yun? Anong uri ng relihiyon o pagkadyos o pagkamakadyos yung sa pagsunod mo sa yung mga sinasabi sa iyo ng yung budhi at sa pagtuturo mo nito ay natatapakan mo na at nasasagasaan ng kapwa na dumating si Jesus para mahalin. Anong uri ng spirituality yung sa pagpapromote mo nito ay nasusugatan mo ang iba. Tinatanggihan mo ang iba, 
tinatakwil mong iba. This is not the spirituality modeled by Jesus. So, Jesus brought God from heaven to earth. And He brought God into the synagogue where obviously it was not God who was ruling but the law and the prophets. And today, as in the last many thousand years, the church has limited God and Jesus within the religious confines of the church. Ito ang dapat natin may isip, na ang ating pananalig hindi lang nakakonfine within a building, within a certain time frame of worship and fellowship, but we must bring God to the world and bring the world into the church. The world meaning people who have needs, who have cares, people who are imperfect, people who are sick, they should be brought to the hospital because the church is a hospital. But what kind of hospital will say, you are too sick, you are not qualified to enter? What kind of hospital will say, you are too sick, you must be kicked out? Saan ka pagagaling kung ire-reject ka nung hospital? At yung mga tao na may mga spiritual issues, whether those are imagined by the church or not, yung mga tao na may mga spiritual illnesses, true or not, saan pa sila pupunta kung yung church pa ang magpapalaya sa kanila? Pero yun ang nangyayari. Kaya napakarami mga tao na sa loob ng church, tinitiran din ang mga spirito. Tingnan niyo ang katabi niyo. Siyempre, hindi siya yun. Pero ganun. Pag nasa church ka, kailangan mo lagi magpanggap, magtago, matakot. Meron kang inner demons. Lagi ka nalang nagigilty, pero hanggang doon na lang, hindi naman ka nakakatanggap ng pagpapatawad ng Diyos, ng paglilinis at pagyakap at pagmamahal niya, hanggang guilt na lang, eh di negative yung laman ng iyong puso. Hindi pa hinga yun. We've got to believe that God loves us unconditionally through Jesus. And we've got to operationalize that belief, put it to practice, that the result is peace of mind, that the result is rest of the soul, that the result is kindness and goodness to others. This is what it means that the law and the prophets were up to John. The unkindness, sometimes the cruel implementation of the law ended with John. There is no need for Jesus' people to continue with those. And there is no need to worry that people might abuse if we are kind because God is in control. It is God who will be our judge. Huwag nating saklawan ang trabaho ng Diyos. Ang gawin natin ay yung sabi ni Jesus, They will know you are my disciples if you are loving. I'm leaving. I want you to do what I have been doing. Greater things you can do because I will empower you and I will send the Holy Spirit. And it is in the mission of loving people and of loving ourselves. The world must be brought into the church. But how can the world enter the church if the church is too snooty, if the church is too choosy, masyadong maselan, masyadong mahigpit, masyadong masungit? Kaya umiiwas na ang world to enter the church. Kasi ang nakikita nila sa ng church are the Pharisees, not the loving Jesus. Pag si loving Jesus ang nakita ng mga tao sa church, hindi mo na kailangang imbitahan Nandun sila tulad ng ginawa nila kay Jesus. The whole town was outside the door because the whole town was asking for love. The whole town needed healing and acceptance and belongingness and that's still the same today. Hindi yan gimmick to attract people. This is the mission given to us by the Lord to heal, to love, to care for one another. People need the Jesus touch for inclusion, not for exclusion. Not separation, but unity. Tapos ang dami-dami mga grupo ang ina-advocate nila, separation. The churches of the Lord, the many various congregations, the many different sects, the churches of the Lord will survive and flourish in cooperation not in competition, not in destructive criticism of each other. Kaya kumukonti na lang, kumukonti ang nag-church kasi nawawalan sila ng gana sa mga taong nandun sa church. 
Kaya kailangan natin ibalik yung spirit of the Lord Jesus. The people, all of them came to Jesus. Now do we teach and preach and practice freedom from inner demons? Freedom from inner demons could only happen when you get the touch from the Lord. The cleansing, the healing, the restoring, accepting, and loving touch. Nagkaroon ng mga iba't ibang project all over the world. Free hugs, father hugs, mother hugs sa kalagay sa t-shirt ng mga nag-volunteer. Ang daming mga tao na pag nakita nila, get your free mother's hug, na yumayakap sila sa total strangers at tumihikbi, lumuluha, kasi kulang na kulang pala sila sa yakap ng nanay o yakap ng sariling tatay. In fact, rejection, sipa, tadyak pa nga natanggap nila ang daming malalalim na sugat ng mga tao. Kaya kailangan tayong maggamutan sa isa't isa kasi lahat naman wounded. Paano kung wounded ka na tapos patuloy ka pa rin mambabato ng kapwa at binabato ka rin? E di wala nang paggaling. Jesus is the answer. Do we teach and practice healing of the body and soul? In the mind, in the heart, there must be unity. Nahahati tayo kung sabi ng religious law, dapat ganito ka, tapos ang totoo sa buhay mo, di mo masunod-sunod. Hindi e hati ka na, guilty ka na. Tapos nagpe-pretend ka pag nasusunod mo para hindi ka ma-judge, nadodoble na ngayon yung guilt mo. Nadodoble yung load. Ang sagot lang doon is matanggap mo kung hanggang saan ka lang talaga. At matanggap mo na ang kulang mo pinupuno ni Jesus. Na sa tingin ng Ama puno ka, hindi dahil sa performance mo, kundi dahil sa pag-ibig sa iyo ni Jesus na pinupuno ka. Kung sa tingin mo may karumihan ka at hindi mo matanggal-tanggal, anong gagawin mo buong buhay guilty ka? O tatanggapin mong nililinis ka ng dugo ni Jesus? Na kahit sa iyong sarili, alam mong meron ka pa rin dumi, pero sa tingin ng langit, nawawala yun, pinapawi, dinadala ng dugo ni Jesus na umago sa krus. Kaya sinabi, if you believe, you will be saved. Hindi ka lang maniniwala na si Jesus ay Diyos, si Jesus ay namatay para sa iyo, kundi maniniwala kang mahal ka nga niya. At yung pagmamahal niya, talagang nakakalinis. Na kahit sa tingin mo, kulang ka pa rin, marumi ka pa rin, malinis ka na kasi nilinis ka na ng dugo ni Jesus. At ang nakikita ng langit sa iyo, ang yung kalinisan through Jesus, not yung sarili mong lack of it. Sabi, if you believe this, you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from eternal hell, but also saved from hell on earth. Saved from needless guilt for being just who you are. Saved from self-flagellation. You are saved from self-rejection and then you will have peace and you will have rest. The spirit of the work of Jesus removes labels. Do not label yourself. Do not label other people. If there is a label that you're going to put on yourself and others, it is cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Yun ang label. Loved by God. Pag may nakikita kang tao na iinis ka, ilagay mong label, loved by God. Therefore, I must find reasons to love the person if I haven't found yet. Or at the very least, I will obey God and just be loving. Labels divide us. Labels. Unclean, unclean. Can you imagine that? And yet we call people sinner, sinner, sinner. Labeling yun. Unclean din ang ibig sabihin nun. Ibinabalik lang natin yung kautosan na ilabel ang mga tao. Takot na takot yung iba na mag-practice ng acceptance, ng love, ng inclusion, na para bang baka ako mahawa sa kasalanan niya. Hindi mikrobyo yan. You are you. Yung tao na yun, ganun yun. Kahit mo siya mahalin at ayaw mo siya, hindi ka magiging tulad niya kasi ikaw ay ikaw, nilikha kang ikaw ay ikaw. Kung meron ka mang mga na-acquire ng mga habits, Acquired lang yun, hindi yung nat- natural inborn quality mo yun. Yung natural inborn quality mo, hindi yun pwedeng palitan ng exposure to anyone kasi ikaw ay ikaw. So huwag tayo masyadong matakot sa mga tao na baka tayo matulad sa kanila pag inaccept natin. Huwag tayo baka matulad yung anak natin sa ganung klasik tao pagka minahal natin. Hindi mangyayari yun, especially with correct instruction, with enough teaching. Ang ating ginagawa, ang ating ugali, tatlo lang ebel yan, sabi ni Jesus. There are eunuchs who were born that way. In other words, nature niya yun. Kahit anong gawin mo, hindi mo may iba. But there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by others. By conditioning. By learning. So these are habits that are learned. They can be unlearned. Habits that were conditioned, they can be reconditioned. 
Kaya yung mga tinasabi, ay nagbago. Pero yung mga inborn, hindi yung magbabago. Kasi yun ang likha ng Diyos sa kanya. Pagkatas meron naman na eunuchs, who were eunuchs by their decision. So if they decide to be, otherwise they can. So tatlo yan, meron pwede magbago dahil nag-design siya magbago. Kasi nag-design lang naman siya maging ganun eh. Meron namang naging ganun siya, influence ng iba. So pag na-influence siya ng contra-influence, pwede siya maiba. Pero merong yun na yun. Can a leopard change its spots? Can an Ethiopian change his skin? The obvious answer is no. There are inborn qualities that are yours alone. There are inborn qualities that are his or hers alone. That even if I loved her, I took care of her, I will not become like her because we are different at birth. Hindi tayo dapat matakot sa ganung mga uri ng pagmamahal. Jesus was not afraid to love anyone. In fact, yung love niya ang nag-heal. Paano natin i-apply sa ating buhay yan? And ang challenge ko sa inyo mga kapatid, sa family agad. Kasi sa family, unang-unang nakakatanggap ng rejection ng tao eh. So sa family agad, pairali ng pagka-Hesus. And then in your immediate environment, neighborhood, workplace, and very specially sa church. Kaya gustong-gusto ko lahat kayo maging member ng sambahay. Para sa sambahay, konti lang kayo, nagkakapalagayang loob, magkakakilala, friends, hanggang sumakabilang buhay. Ang saya. That's why you should be part of a sambahay. Sa ganitong napakalaking church, mahirap naman humanap ng acceptance and love na nakikita ka lang once a week. But in a small gathering, where you know all the pains, the heartaches, the history of each one, ang papairalin nyo lang yung pag-ibig ni Jesus, it will be paradise on earth. Huwag pairalin yung pagka-Pharisee, yung pintasan, yung nagmamanmanan at nagja-judge ng isa't isa kasi magiging magulo yun. But Jesus wants you well. And Jesus wants a peaceful life for you. Hindi lang when you rest in peace. But now, in this life, to have peace. And that happens only when the love of Christ reigns supreme. Father, teach us. Turuan niyo po kami to receive the Jesus touch and to give the Jesus touch to everyone who needs it. Teach us to review all our values. Salain namin lahat ng aming mga religious sensibilities through the filter of Jesus. Tulad ng sinabing napakalinaw that the law and the prophets are up to John. Turuan niyo kami kung ano sa aming mga kostumbre, mga ugali, practices ang only up to John. But now, because this is the time and period of Jesus, it should now end and transform into Jesusness. Pagbulay-bulayin natin ang mga ito, mga kapatid, hanapan ng personal applications.